my initial thought was I wasn't that surprised. I think it was expected, difficult to to hear and to deliver the message to the players. But I uh, I wasn't surprised. Like I said, I think it was expected that that was going to happen. And the reality is, if it's not safe for us to to get back to competition and be traveling with our team and you know to bring all of our student athletes back because not everyone's back on campus yet and to be going to other campuses and playing in different states across the Northeast. If it's not safe to do so, then obviously it's not something that we want to do. So again, I wasn't disappointed. It was more just like, okay, so what's the next step? If we can't compete until the spring, you know, can we at least train? And then what does that look like? So that's kind of our, our, our minds mindset just shift a little bit from like, okay, we're not going to compete. It's not going to be a traditional fall season, but how can we still continue to create a good environment and continue to get better, you know? You know, we've been training. Uh, we're like, we're in our eight hour segments right now with the NCAA. So we're not allowed to train more than eight hours a week. Four hours of that is with the ball. Uh, the other four hours of that is more just like strength and conditioning. And, and right now we're also in phase one of our return to play as a university, as a, a department, and just following the guidelines that the NCAA has put in place. So what that means is we're in like small groups, like little cohorts within our team. Again, we only have 20 guys here. So, you know, we have our goalkeepers working out together. And then we have, you know, like two groups of eight or nine field players working with one coach. So the groups are with 10 or less. And we're doing a lot of skill-based training, conditioning, you know, speed and agility stuff and just no contact right now. You know, I don't think it's affected the chemistry at all. The guys are still really, really motivated to train and, and they're just happy to be able to do something. Could always, we always say it could always be worse. You know, we could always not be training. I mean, there are a lot of teams. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but there are definitely a lot of programs right now that are not training, you know, not just soccer programs, but other fall sport programs, inter sport programs that have not gotten together yet. You know, we're already working with our strength and conditioning coach. We're working in small groups from a soccer perspective. So we're just thankful to be able to do that. So if we're able to be on the field and, you know, working to improve every single day, then I think naturally the chemistry within the group is getting stronger, you know. For this year, it didn't really impact recruiting that much uh, because, you know, this, the pandemic, I think, began around March, early April. And so by then, we, we pretty much had guys committed at that point. It was more just figuring out, you know, who was going to come back to campus and who was going to study from home until everyone could safely get back here. I think it's starting to impact recruiting a bit for next year. Um, the NCAA, you know, just released some new eligibility stuff just you know allowing this year to essentially not impact any of the players on the field and and in the classroom um, so essentially everyone gets their year back so now we're just having individual meetings with our players and obviously figuring out which of our grad students that were supposed to finish up this year and which of our seniors that were supposed to finish up this year want to come back for next year and based off of that retention obviously that may impact recruiting a bit this, this year wasn't going to be a huge recruiting class for us anyway, because we brought in a lot of guys last year and a lot of guys for this year. But that's definitely um, another challenge for sure.